when I saw him, I was like, that's who I want to be. You know, that's who I want to be. Um, I want to be that. I want to be him because he is the freest black man on the planet. You know? Hello, everyone. This video will be entitled Remembering an Icon, Paul Mooney, the late great comedian. Paul Mooney that just passed away May 19th on Malcolm X's birthday. I don't think it's by coincidence. You know, Malcolm X being as pro-black as he was and for Paul Mooney to pass away on his birthday. Paul Mooney, if you know him, being as pro-black and unfiltered and tell it like it is as he was. Um, I don't know if that's coincidence or if that's just ordained and divine. Um, but um, if you've seen a video of this like mine before, you can find like another one where I did remembering an icon from Tony Morrison who passed away last year. Um, and I think I'm going to continue doing these. You know, there's been so many legends and icons that have really impacted and inspired my life, my work, my art, uh, my political, social, and cultural sentiments. They have really shaped and formed me. And I feel like Tony was one, of course, and Paul Mooney has been one as well. I was thinking of the best way to describe Paul Mooney, and I was thinking about it, and I was like, when I first it was even introduced to Paul Mooney, it was through the Dave Chappelle show, but when I was first really, really introduced to him, just thought that this, is, this has to be the freest black man I have ever seen in my life. Like, the way he was so raw and unfiltered and so unapologetically black, and he didn't really care who he offended. Like, he was going to tell the truth and tell it like it was. And if you didn't like it, well, oh well. And then one joke, he was like, you know, they be talking about, I know wife would be talking about me or whatever. And it's like, well, y'all did all this shit and y'all don't feel no way about it. So I'm going to tell the truth and you, you just have to get over it. You know, you told me to get over you, you get over me, you know. And that's just how unapologetically black he was. I remember being reintroduced to him. Um, in college, and it was like late at night, it was on HBO, um, I think it was my freshman year, I was probably should have been doing some homework or something, but I had run across a special was coming on, on HBO. Uh, it was actually Paul Mooney, it was called A Piece of My Mind, <laughs> and I just remember sitting there for like, I, I think it's like, it's like an hour and a half long or something like that, and I was just dying laughing. I was just like, oh my goodness, this man, this man is not, oh, I mean, this man is, you know, I mean, comically genius, but also his political and racial commentary is so on point and so on the nose. And I just remember going on this really, like, huge deep dive into who he was and even trying to find more specials where he's talked about race and politics and culture and all this stuff. I'm the first person that really made me feel like I wasn't crazy. Like, you know, all the stuff, like, black people have a tendency to, like, we see the racist shit going on and we'll just be like, well, it is what it is and we'll let it go. And Paul Mooney would be like, this shit is crazy, and he's going to talk about it. And I felt the exact same way. I was like, finally, maybe I'm not crazy. <laughs> maybe I'm not crazy. Maybe this world is full of shit and some bullshit. And maybe it's okay to yell about it, to scream about it, to talk about it, you know, to talk shit about it, you know. And, it, and he did it, and Paul Mooney was able to do that in a way that also made it like, enjoyable and you can like laugh at it and even though it was bullshit it was like let's laugh at this shit we can get angry we can get angry and then we can laugh about it because because that's what we because that's what black people do best you know we take our pain and even if we can't do anything immediately right now to stop it we're going to laugh about it you know we're going to make a joke out of it we're going to get through this shit and i didn't even know what to call it then you know now we call it respectability politics and i just did a video on respectability politics and micaiah bryant and, you know, Paul Mooney was talking about this before there was even a term for it, and I didn't even know what it was. And we didn't even, I didn't even recognize what it was at the time when he was talking about it, but he was talking about perspectively topics all the time. You know, his favorite thing was, you know, the N-word. You know, people were always getting on him about the N-word. Um, he was always being put on panels about the N-word, and he would say, you know, I say nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I say nigga a hundred times a day, it makes my teeth white. <laughs> nigga, 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 nigga. <laughs> like, you know, he was like, he didn't really play into respectability politics, and he was really that person that was like, fuck your respectability politics. You don't want me to say nigga, but well, then you shouldn't have made the shit up. 
You shouldn't have made the shit up. You shouldn't have made the shit up. Brought niggas over here. Called them nigga. Fucked them. Put them in slavery. Made them work for free. The word's here now, and I'm gonna fucking use it. I'm gonna fucking use it. And what you, what you gonna do about it? I think he's actually the first person to coin the term of a nigga wake-up call. People gonna get their nigga wake-up call. He was always about, like, you know, like, y'all gonna get y'all nigga wake-up call. Y'all think y'all so above. Some of y'all in this, ho some of y'all black Hollywood people think y'all are so above this racial stuff. He even had a joke one time where he was like... Because a lot of people are brainwashed. That that really lynch shit and flow. A lot of niggas. Oh, I went to Yale. Well, nigga, you should have went to jail and learned something. Because you think you so... Oh, I'm so above it. Yeah, be that black skin. I don't care who you are. He was really like, fuck your respectability politics because it ain't going to save you. You know, white people got the protection for the complexion for the collection. <laughs> what he used to like to say. Um, and this shit is not going to save you because you don't have the white skin color and you think you're so above it and you're not. You just a nigga at the end of the day like everybody fucking else. So get off your fucking high horse and come down here with us and have some solidarity. Stop trying to act like you're better than every fucking body. And that's what I was trying to essentially say in my Micaiah Bryant video. That those same sentiments. Y'all think y'all so fucking above that girl that that um got shot by the police. Y'all think, oh, I would never be like her. But all, y'all, I went to jail. Well, nigga, you should have went to jail and learned something. And I, the reason why I called him the freest black man that I have ever seen is because the way he was able to so effortlessly. And I'm not saying that he never faced any hardship because he probably did and he probably was blacklisted, you know, a few times and probably even blackballed and, you know, people probably didn't want him around. But this man had a long-lasting career that lasted decades. The way he was able to preserve his dignity while maneuvering Hollywood. That's also something he talked about, too, is that you cannot... He talked about that in one special where he was like, it's hard as a black person to go to Hollywood unscathed and, you know, not traumatized and not have, like, white people come after you. Every black entertainer, you can, I mean, almost every black entertainer I have ever seen in my life has gone through some type of thing with Hollywood, you know, getting their nigga wake-up call, as Paul Mooney would like to call it. The fact that he was able to maneuver Hollywood, keep his dignity intact, say what he wanted to say, you know, that to me made him the freest black man on the planet. Um, and I always dreamed of not necessarily being like a comedian like him, but modeling my, my life after him. Like, I want to be able to say what the fuck I want to say too and still maneuver through life and still live, a, even if it's not like uberly successful and I'm not a like billionaire, or be, not that I have any dreams of being a millionaire or being there anyway, but just living a decent life and being able to say what I need to say and tell the truth and speak and speak truth to power and not have to like, you know, kiss nobody ass and bow down to nobody. You know, I wanted, I, that's a he is who I wanted to be. When I saw him, I was like, that's who I want to be. You know, that's who I want to be. Um, I want to be that, I want to be him because he is the freest black man on the planet. And he was like, you know, there's only two type of black people in America. Either you're running free or you're running scared. Which way you're running? And the truth of the matter is, a lot of niggas are running scared. They are trying to assimilate as much as they fucking can. And so they hold their tongue on a lot of issues. And it really annoys me. Because um, I wish that they had, they felt free enough where they could say what they wanted to and how they felt. But, you know, they are afraid. They are afraid. And even you see it with all the black celebrities. They are also all afraid to say how they feel and what they feel. And they are always, you know, usually we see it as throwing black people on the bus. But really, honestly, what they're doing is securing, securing their own security in Hollywood. You know, they don't want to anger white executives and producers and et cetera, et cetera. And so they're, they can't, they're not free. They can't really say, to me, you know, those black people, I know people see, like, these black people, like, you know, Beyonce or Jay-Z or whoever. And that's not to single them out or nothing like that. But I know they see, you know, that them as being like, oh, I want to be like them. I never wanted to be like any of the celebrities. 
they never seem free to me. They always seem stressed. And how do I cater to this audience? And how do I cater to that audience? And I have to give a fuck about what they think and what these people think. And they're always trying to like please every fucking body so that they can maintain their wealth and, you know, uh, good graces within Hollywood. And Paul Mooney, that's who I want to be because he didn't give a fuck about these people. You know, his career spans so much. This man, you know, worked all the way from Good Times to Sanford and Son. Sanford and Son, this man worked on SNL, In Living Color, you know, came up with Homemade Trial. That was his invention. I think he also worked on Mad TV, Dave Chappelle. Of course, we all know him for working with Richard Pryor and on a lot of his movies this man played, you know, Sam Cooke and I think it was the Buddy Holly story as well. I mean, he had a bunch of specials. You know, he didn't win no big awards. He didn't get congratulated. He didn't get congratulated by the big institutions like the posters or the Grammys, the Scammies. Like, he didn't win any of the awards that he didn't expect to, nor did he care about them or want to, honestly. And... You know, it's like, but he still had mad respect from a whole lot of his peers. Like, you listen to any of his peers, any comedian talk about, you know, Paul Mooney, they really respected his genius. It really one of my, like, big moments in my life where I was like, ah, oh, like, I want to be like that guy. Like, I want to be like, I want to be as free as that guy. I want to be as free as that guy. And that's why I try not to think to myself too much on this channel, because what is the point? What is the point of me coming on here and changing how I talk and trying to sound no, 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 like this or this or trying to do that? Or, this is like, I don't want to be free on here. I want to, if, if there's no other place that I can be free, at least I need to be free on my own YouTube channel. A couple of days ago when he had passed away, um, I was listening to his um, record or like his old comedy special, Heavy. Like I, I had a whole Paul Mooney day on my Instagram. Like I was just, you know, it was clip after clip after clip after clip I was posting. To me, it's not a somber moment or, you know, a sad moment because this man lived a full life. This man lived, you know, a very full life. He said what he needed to say. He impacted, you know, generations, but not only comedians, um, but also just the viewers, the black viewers. If you ever saw Paul Mooney, he changed... He twisted your way of thinking in some form of fashion. He made you look at things differently in some form of fashion. This man lived a very successful and full life. And maybe he didn't, ha maybe he didn't have millions and billions and trillions of dollars. But he had respect. And I think that's one thing that he said in um, a comedy special as well. He was like, you know, I don't care about being Hollywood. You know, I I'm neighborhood. I don't care about being big or being famous or having a whole lot of money or a whole lot of followers. Like, I'm neighborhood. And, you know, I care about the community. I care about the actual people on the ground, not these rich motherfuckers that do all this weird shit and be, you know, dancing and cooning and tap dancing and shucking and jiving and all this stuff. You know? Well, that's, that, that's not free to me. It would be dearly missed. But we have, we all, we have so many of his teachings and so many of his, because I feel like his comedy, his, you know, his, you know, his comedy specials and his shows, they were teaching moments as well. And comedy usually is, it's just teaching, but in the form of humor, you know? I feel like we, we, these people are, you know, lecturers and professors and philosophers um, and teachers. And just because they don't, you know, work at the school <laughs> doesn't mean that they're any less important to, you know, our well-being and how we sort of, how we can view and see the world and make the world a better place, you know. Um, and I just really, really appreciate what he did on his time here. And if I can even, you know, do half of what he did, I'll be happy. <laughs> you know, if I can do half, if I can live my life half as how he lived his life, you know, as free and unfiltered as he lived his life, you know, as successful as he lived his life, you know, I, I'd be a pretty happy person. So, yeah, let me know in the comments section what you guys thought or your thoughts on Paul Mooney, your favorite jokes of Paul Mooney. I shared a few on here. Um, but I will see you all next time for the next video.